All right, let's start with um, figuring out what an inverse is. And before we start with a mathematical example, let's start with a non-math example. So let's take some actions, such as suppose I do something like open a door, and then the next thing I do is walk in the room. And then the third thing I do is sit down, hopefully in a chair. And then the fourth thing I do is open a book. So in my little action step here, I've done four different things. OK, so we can call this our um, function, if you will. This is our function. All right. And then now I want to um, create an inverse to this. So what an inverse does is it's going to do each one of these things, but it's going to do them in opposite order, and it's going to do it reverse. So my inverse would be, the first step I would do is close the book, and then the next step I would do is stand up. And the third thing I would do would be to walk out of the room. And I suppose technically we'd walk backwards. So we're going to walk out the room. And then the very last thing I would do is close the door. OK, so that's my inverse. This is just a basic example to give you the idea of what an inverse is. So the thing to notice here is when I started my function, I was right here. So this is the start of my function. And then the other thing to notice is that when I'm done with my inverse, I'm back at the start, so to speak. Okay. So the, the inverse not only undid all of these different things that I did, um, but it took me back to the beginning. And then also notice that when I finished the function, so this was the finished part of the function, I was right here opening the book, yet when I started the inverse, I was, if you will, at the finish. It would have been better to call that end. So you see how I color coded this, how the blue ones go together and the orange ones go together, and we'll get into that in more detail when we talk about domain and range. So there's a definition of an inverse. You can put that in your own words. It does or undoes something. Now let's talk about function notation, or inverse notation, I should say. So inverse notation. This is really important. So uh, an inverse or a function says if I have f of a equals b, so see here, a is my input and b is my output, then if I have an inverse, I write it like such. So let me get rid of that. So I write it as f negative 1, that means the inverse, b equals a. So see how the output of the function became the input of the inverse and the input of the function becomes the output of the inverse. Okay, And then I also want you to note this little negative 1 up here. That's the function inverse. And then let's also say, note, that this notation, like this, does not mean 1 over f of x. That's not what that means. In, in inverse notation, um, it deals with an inverse of a function. It does not mean a reciprocal. So in other words, you cannot, uh, you cannot on your calculator hit that little negative 1 button and find an inverse. That is not what we're going to do here. So that's not inverse notation. All right, let's do an example, basic example. All right, so we want to find an inverse. Here's a simple function, uh, 3x. Step 1. I'm going to switch this out of function notation into y equals. Makes it a little easier to work with. So that was step one. Let's make a little one over here. Step two, I'm going to switch the x and the y. Step three, I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to do that by dividing by three. Let me flip that around at the same time. 
and then step 4, I'm going to rewrite this with my function notation. x over 3. And that is the inverse. So notice in the original equation here, I multiplied by 3. And in the inverse, I am dividing by 3. Let's do a check and see how this works. So this is our first check, our first style of checking. Okay. So I'm going to take my original function and I'm going to put 4 in. So 4 is my input. And when I put 4 in, 3 times 4 equals 12. So the input is 4 and the output is 12. Now let's do, uh, let's do this with our inverse. So here's our inverse. And so I want to put in my inverse 12. So I have x over 3. So 12, oh, 12 over 3 equals 4. And let me get the right color here. So here's my output. And of course, that matched the input of the original function. And let's just denote our input of the inverse which matched the original output. See how they match each other? Okay, so those two um, go together and the input outputs go together. So this is our first check is um, to put in an input, get out an output of the function, take that output of the function into the inverse and you should get the original input. That's our first check. Let's do another check. Um, and I think I can squeeze this in down here. Okay, so our second check is to do a composite. So I want to compose the function with its inverse. Okay, so this looks like 3 because I start with f of x and everywhere there's an x I'm going to put um, the inverse function. So that's x over 3 and when I simplify that I get x. Let's also compose the inverse with the function. So that's going to look like 3x over 3, because this is the inverse part. Simplified, that is x. So to sum this up, when I compose a function in its inverse, or an inverse in its function, either way, I get x. And then I'll show you that graphically in another example. So this is the end of the first example.